Good evening. I'm Siwa Bili Rose Amador LeBeau, and I'd like to welcome you to NATO Voice TV. This evening we have some very special guests, good friends of mine, Michael Horace and Penny Plant, and they have so many titles. Uh, let's see, they're business people, actors, activists. Um, you guys do it all artists. Yeah. You guys stay very busy, but welcome to the show. And you know, a lot of times I go places and people say, oh, look at your jewelry, it's so pretty. Where can I get some? Where can I get your earrings? Where can I get this and that? And I always say, go to powwows. And they say, I don't know where there's a powwow, but you guys have a store and it's called Gathering Tribes. That's right. Tell us about the store. So I opened it in 1991 and it's on Solano Avenue in Albany, which is right next to Berkeley, right on the corner of Santa Fe and Solano. And we feature arts, crafts, and jewelry by indigenous artists from Alaska to Chile. So it's all Native America. To and us. you have some beautiful yeah. things in there. Thank you. And we feature Michael's work, his ledger paintings and jewelry, and we have lots of um, award-winning artists that come and do weekend events throughout the year. Oh, how nice. Yeah, so what kind of wor artwork do you do? Well, I'm basically a jeweler. You know, my, my family's part Zuni, so I've been doing jewelry since I've been a little guy. But I also do what's called ledger art. It's a type of uh, uh, traditional native folk art. We used to paint on hides. That was our history book, our calendar. We could roll it up, take it with us. And then uh, reservation period, late, late 1800s, early 1900s, we start painting on pieces of found paper, mostly out of ledger books that took records of goods and commodities mm. that were brought to the reservation itself or forts or settlements, but any old maps, love letters, uh, um, Bibles in the native language, and I painted all the original documents for the time period. I've been doing this for, you know, over 35 years. So. I think I've seen some of your work. Yeah. It's beautiful. You do really good work. Oh, thanks. And yeah. I, I've seen some of the work you've done for posters and so forth yeah. in the community. I do a lot of stuff for the community, for the powwows and for fundraisers and for uh, uh, activist events. Mm -hmm. Did you do one for the Gathering of Nations? Yeah, I did. Yeah, I, I did, thought you did. I did the poster and jackets uh, a couple of years for, for uh -huh. Gathering of Nations, yeah. Oh, wow, congratulations. And you have a lot of guest artists come in. Yeah. You have shows and so forth? We do. Um, our next show will be on the second Saturday of April, and we have a new artist who's just amazingly successful. Gathering Tribes is the first place she's ever shown at, and oh. we've sold 24 of her paintings since last August. Her name is Alta Moore. She's Western Shoshone. She lives in Oakland, and she does these beautiful images of trees and water and wind and animals mm. on um, either Bristol paper or on canvas, oil on canvas. And oh. So she'll be there at Gathering Tribes from 3 to 5 the second Saturday of April. And then um, later on in April we have Ted Garcia who's a Chumash sculptor oh. and he'll be there. He's really a sweet guy. But people can find out about our shows by going to GatheringTribes.com and just clicking on the events page. Now, besides jewelry and paintings, what do you have there? What can people find? We have potter, pottery. We have um, Katsina dolls, Hopi Katsina dolls. Uh, probably the largest selection of Zuni fetish carvings in the Bay Area. Mm -hmm. Lots and lots of jewelry. Um, the Zapotec wooden animals from Oaxaca, as well as the, the textiles from Oaxaca. And the, the things change because different, we're meeting different people yeah. all the time, and so we get um, different things in from different parts of the country. We have CDs. Some old, yeah, we have music, oh, we have okay. books, a lot of books. Flutes. Um, flutes and drums. drums. And right now we also have a, a, a small but really amazing selection of Inupiat art from Alaska. And oh. Sam Dimmick just brought in some gorgeous um, sculpt sculpture pieces that are orcas and salmon and the polar bear already sold mm -hmm. and we've only had it in for a couple of days. Oh my. So hopefully we'll be getting some more from him of the polar bears. Well that's a great, it's close by San Jose, mm -hmm. it's a great place for people to it's go. It's a chance and, yeah. to, when we bring the artists so people can come and have a discussion about the, the meaning of the pieces, the materials and the process that's used, you know, so it's a uh, it's very interesting for people to actually come and meet the artists themselves. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. And we also have Huichol art. Uh huh. And our Huichol brother, who we, we adopted him into our family, his name is Luciano Valdez. And he, he comes every year on the first weekend of May and the first weekend of December. And like many of our artists, the entire proceeds of what they make go to them that weekend. 
And so it's our way of supporting the artists, of introducing mm -hmm. our customer community to Native artists that they wouldn't normally meet. What I really like about your store is that you have indigenous art from the Americas, mm -hmm. not just from the United States. Right. It's not limited. We don't recognize those borders. No. That no, is those. excellent. Yeah. I like that. I like that. We do, too. It. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so go out to that store. I mean, you really should check it out. And uh, you find us. some beautiful pieces out there because people always say, "Where can you? Where can I find this? Where can I find you know native jewelry? Where can I find paintings?" This is the place to go. Mm -hmm. So that's wonderful. Now, before we get into what you've both been into as far as your activist uh, work, you're an actor. Yeah, I've been doing it for a long time. I started as a as a wrangler and a stuntman. I wasn't a very good uh, rodeo rider, and the first time somebody actually paid me to fall off my horse, I went, I can do that really well. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I've been in the wrong end of this business, but I've done everything from the um, the, uh, the bad remake of The Lone Ranger in 1980 to Twin Peaks. Twin mm. Peaks and a wonderful series in Canada for the Canadian television called North of 60, a prime time native drama. It was on for seven years. I did, oh, uh, wow. I did uh, two and a half years of it. And it was just, uh, some of it was written by indigenous uh, writers, uh, directed by indigenous writers. And all these wonderful uh, Canadian native actors, Tantu Cardinal and Adam Beach and mm -hmm. Graham Greene. And, and uh, all these people came out of that series. I was one of only two native people from the States to ever be on that series. And it was really? really wonderful. Yeah. Wow. So I spent, we're gonna talk about uh, the tar sands and Idle No More, and I spent a lot of time in, in Northern Alberta. Oh, wonderful. Um, and we've been hearing a lot about Idle No More. Mm -hmm. um, here in San Jose, there was a, um, a Idle No More gathering at the Mexica ceremony just recently. Mm -hmm. And we had one at Valley Fair Mall. I was at that one. And I was at the one the, um, the Capoli Tonoleque dancers had one on King and Story in San Jose. So there's been several different uh, uh, gatherings or flash mobs, mm -hmm. and <laughs> whatever you want to call them. But, you know, what's it all about? Why don't we go back and where did that start? So it started with four women for first three First Nations women and one woman of European ancestry up in Canada. And I don't have the exact story, but I like to imagine them sitting around a kitchen table saying, well, you know, the Harper government, the prime minister in Canada is trying to violate our treaties and trying to get access to all of our waters. And so, you know, what, what should we do about it? And they decided to start a revolution using Facebook and Twitter, similar to what the um, what happened in the Middle East and in northern Africa a couple of years ago and with Occupy. And so they decided to call it Idle No More. And of course we know a lot of us have always been Idle No More. <laughs> but I, I, I think it's an appropriate um, title for this movement that started. And it, it's, they actually did that towards the end of October. So it took a while for it to gain momentum and by December um, the Bill C-45 was just weeks away from being passed and um, the end of November, December, and they um, started with flash mob brown dances all through Canada. So when you think about the time period, imagine being in a big shopping mall up in Canada and doing your Christmas shopping and all of a sudden hundreds or thousands of First Nations people come into the mall and start singing and dancing and having their signs about the bills that are coming down and about mm -hmm. First Nations rights and uh, the tar sands and making sure that the environment is remains sustainable or becomes even more so. And so that's how it got started. And also on December 10th, uh, Ch Chief Teresa Spence from the Ottawaspicut nation in Ottawa, probably not pronouncing that accurately. Um, she went on a spiritual hunger fast that lasted, um, I think it was close to 40 days. And, and she, her health was very much impaired and she received lots of um, messages to not you know, fast until death. That what she had done was powerful and it helped move a lot of people, mm -hmm. but we really needed her alive. And um, spiritual leaders went to see her from all over North America, including Chief Kayleen Sisk from the uh, Wintu Nation up at Mount Shasta. 
And um, so it's really been a, a female-led movement. If you look at a lot of the photos on online, you can see that at the beginning of these big marches, they're led by women. And it's very, very beautiful. So just to get back to the bill, on December 4th, there were over 2 million federally protected bodies of water in Canada. After C-4-5 passed, it was reduced to under 200. So from 2 million to under wow. 200. And of course, the reason that the federal government wants to have access to all this fresh water is because it takes literally billions of gallons every year to mine the tar sands and to mine the uranium and to mine the gold and all the other mining of our you know, natural treasures in Mother Earth um, to get them out as a commodity. Mm -hmm. And I'm training myself to not use the word resources because when we use that word resource, re referring to something that's a commodity that can be bought and sold, and um, I've been asking a lot of people, what, what should that word be? And one of my customers at Gathering Tribes came up with natural treasures. And I, that's the closest word that, I can, that I've been able to get for that. So I don't know more kicked off an international solidarity movement that um, it's wonderful when you see the images on Facebook because they're from Sweden and China and Australia and New Zealand and Hawaii and all over the United States and, and <clears throat> down into Central and South America and the, the um, uh, Campesino movement in the highlands of Guatemala sent a letter of solidarity to the mm -hmm. um, I don't know more founding mothers that was just so beautiful it ended with um, and we send you hugs uh -huh. you know so there's a lot of love in this movement yes. and it really is it's a female led movement and it's it's important because it's for our children and our grandchildren and those not yet born. And what was the response mm -hmm. from the the citizens in Canada, the non-native mm -hmm. people? It's been very mixed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's um, there are groups of people that call themselves allies or settlers, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and it's from what I've been able to glean from reading um, is that. The, those groups of people are the same as the native people in their understanding of how everything's connected and ensuring the future for the coming generations. And of course, it's always it's all also flushed out all the racists, just like what happened here when Obama was elected. You know, mm -hmm. it flushed out the racists. And my personal opinion about that is, bring it on. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like a pimple on the face of the culture that we need it to rise up so that it can be healed. And so let's, let's see it all, bring it all to the table. Let's see the worst that you have to bring to us and then let's deal with that. Right, it's, it, it has been very effective since it has reached so, I think yeah. because of the internet, yeah. mm -hmm. has reached so many parts of all the countries. Well, you know. see the pictures of what, that is the oldest boreal forest in the world. It's such beautiful. This is land. in Albany? This is in, in uh, Alberta. 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 Alberta, yeah. Alberta. Yeah. Alberta. And, um, <laughs> There's, I mean, it's just devastating what they're doing, you know, and the traditional people, you know, this picture's popping up, the fish have big tumors on them, and there's cancer in the meat, and the geese, and the people are sick. When we were at the first big rally in Washington, D.C., the, the tribal leaders and spiritual people were there, and they weren't even mad, they were hurt, you know, so it's... It's amazing to me that that you know the rest of the world is not just the native population, you know, starting to understand that no more, no more of doing this to to Mother Earth. You know, if you've got children, if you've got grandchildren, what are you going to what are you going to leave? The water there? runs everywhere. You know, and also how lazy everybody is that this is the only way you have out of your energy solution is the dirtiest fossil fuel that you can find. You know. I mean, this is a country that did amazing, you know, technological advances. You know, it's put your put your brain together and figure out how to do this in, in, a, in a cleaner way. And they re who went to D.C.? You, you went, Penny? We both you went, went the first both. time. Tell us about that. Um, well, I'd, I heard about it, and I've been an activist since the early 80s mm -hmm. and um, just kind of ongoing. And I heard about it, and I said, Michael, we really have to go to this. 
I'm, I'm feeling like this is very, very important and we need to go. And so it was the, the first one was the Indigenous Day of Solidarity um, around the tar sands and stopping the Keystone XL pipeline. Mm -hmm. And that's the one where there were the chiefs from Canada were there, Naomi Klein was there, Deborah White Plume from the Lakota Nation mm -hmm. and um, Tantu was there. A lot of actors whose names I don't know were there. Because yeah. I'm, even though I'm married to one, I'm, <laughs> that's not my. You know his word. name. Yeah. Yeah. I know his name. <laughs> Most of the time, I know his name. And and it was amazing. It was thousands of people, and uh, I think that day, seventy something people did civil disobedience, and I would have done civil dis disobedience that day in front of the White House, except we had to catch a flight home that night. I didn't know that was going to go on. And then I went again in November of the same year, 2011, when we surrounded the White House. And there were thousands and thousands of people there. And a very large indigenous presence. A lot of Lakota people, people from Canada again. And um, at the thickest part of surrounding the White House, it was about eight to 10 deep. And then um, at the thinnest part, it was too deep around the White House. So wow. that's, you know, they have the White House all enclosed now and a mm -hmm, huge fence. Mm -hmm. So there was a lot of people that were there. And then jumping forward to just recently in February, um, Bill McKibben is the founder of 350.org, which is an amazingly active and important environmental group. And the name comes from, um, <coughs> we, we need to reduce the particulates in, the, in our air down to 350. They're at 390 right now and um, the ball is already rolling on, on climate change as we see with all of the big mm -hmm. storms and, mm -hmm. and if the tar sands oil are able to get out into the open market in the way they want, it's going to increase those particles per million to over 400, mm -hmm. which will mean that our ch great Great grandchildren and great grandchildren will be living in an environment that is unsustainable. And so, Bill McKibben, um, he's the one that kicked the ball off for the DC rallies and for the big rally on February 17th. That there were actually lots of rallies across the country, mm -hmm. but in Washington, DC, there were over 40,000 people. So, it went from about 10 to 12,000 people in November of 2011 to over 40,000 people just this last month. And um, here in San Francisco, there were over, I'd say between five and 7,000 people uh, at the climate rally on uh, February 17th in San Francisco. And we were working with um, friends of mine in the Idle No More community. We were able to make sure that Idle No More was part of that event. Okay. Um, the organizers, which included all of the major environmental organizations, when I asked them, um, if we could be a part of it, and this is what we wanted. We wanted um, a round dance, we wanted a, somebody, to, an Ohlone person to do the opening prayer, and we wanted a speaker. They gave us half the program. And I can't tell you how, how fulfilling that was, because I'm used, more used to um, non-Indigenous organizations saying, well, uh, yeah, uh, we're going to do this event, and we'd like somebody to do a prayer. Like after the whole thing is right, organized, right, right, a, right, right. you know, the last Afterthought. thing they think about is us. Mm -hmm. So it was quite wonderful, and and it, and we did have a round dance with hundreds. It might have even been thousands of people. Yeah. Michael did that part of it, and there were probably about twenty of us on stage doing the song. And um, Karina Gold did the opening prayer, and her nephew Luta uh, did a. Ohlone prayer song, and it was really very and Where was this wonderful. held? It was, it was in San Francisco. The rally was at Justin Herman Plaza, mm -hmm. and the first part of the event was surrounding the State Department building, which basically takes a huge, one whole city block in San Francisco. And it was so, there were so many people that it spilled over into the streets, and so the rally had to start earlier. It was, it, it was amazing. It tells me that people, people are care. waking up, that people are concerned, that the majority of America, of people in the United States, I hate to use that word Americans, because we're mm -hmm. Americans from the top to the bottom. That's right. So the, the majority of citizens in the United States know there's a problem. It, they understand that it's time to come together to pressure the federal government into 
resolving the issue as quickly as possible to slow the rolling ball down because we can't stop it. Right, we can right. only mitigate some of the problems that are coming up. And it's so important because I don't think people realize it affects everybody, yeah, everybody's children. People don't understand how water intensive it is to process coal. Uh, to, to, to frack for natural gas, you know, for, for tar sands. It's, it really takes a lot of, of water, which they can never reclaim. They're never going to be able to use, and it's going to pollute the water system. And it already is. Yeah, and they also this it. oil, people say, well, we need to, you know, this is our, it's not going to be our oil. It's going to go right down to the Gulf, go to the refineries if they build a pipeline, and go on the open market. Mm -hmm. And it will only, as Obama just said last week on a press conference, that it will only create 35 to 50 permanent jobs. And the oil industry keeps talking about the thousands of jobs it's going to create, but those aren't permanent jobs. They're just jobs to build the pipeline. Uh -huh. So the pipeline, is the, the southern portion of it has already started. It started to be built last year from Norman, Oklahoma down to Houston. And as we speak, there are people who are, are chaining themselves to the construction equipment. The other part of this that's a first in the United States is that the federal government has given a corporation that's chartered outside of the United States and Canada um, permission to use eminent domain to build a pipeline. And so we have a, a Canadian corporation being allowed to steal private property from U.S. citizens to build a pipeline that does absolutely nothing for the community that it's being built in, where all the profits are still going to the oil companies in Canada. And, um, and it's destroying people's farms and their ranches because all pipelines have spills. Yeah, it's course. already, it's already leaked. The, the parts that they've already built are, have been leaked. Tell me about affinity groups and how mm -hmm. people hearing this for the first time, you know, say, I got to do something. How can I help? What can I do? So right now, the most important thing all of us can do, and I'm encouraging you all to do it on a daily basis, is to call, write letters, and send faxes to the President's office, President Obama, to John Kerry at the State Department, and check and make sure that your elected officials, like your senators and congresspeople, if, if they are for or against the pipeline. And if they're, they're against it, can I write them a thank you note, okay. you know? It's so grateful to all of those who are mm -hmm. standing up. But there's also a um, senatorial committee that's been formed to try to take the decision for the pipeline, the Keystone XL, out of Obama's hands. So this is a mm -hmm. dastardly, dirty, under the table kind of thing Any way you that they're trying it. to do. <laughs> And Terrible. so it's important to find out if your senator, elected representative, is for or against it. And do it every day. You know, it's important that we do certain things every day. Just make mm -hmm. it a part of your day. Like, okay, it's 6 o'clock. It's time to, yeah. to email or fax right, or call right. whoever of those three um, groups of people. And, and that's the only way that it, it can be stopped at this point. And otherwise, we'll be going to, if they approve it, we'll be going to um, South Dakota and Nebraska, and I'll be one of those people chaining myself to, those, to the construction equipment. So an affinity group is a group of people who f get together and go through nonviolent direct action training, which teaches people how to intentionally be arrested without committing any acts of violence because that's very, very important. Our power is not in guns. It's not in beating anyone up. It's not in committing any kind of violence. The only power we really have as activists is nonviolence. Because there, if there are enough of us sitting in front of those trucks, if we could have 5,000 people sitting in front of the construction getting arrested, it's going to really slow that pipeline down and maybe the decision can be reversed. And so in an affinity group, there are people who choose to do civil disobedience, and there are the people who choose to support them in that. So support would mean calling their jobs if necessary, to, 
tell them that they're not going to be coming to work for a period of time, taking care of their children, watering their plants, you know, just being there. Usually when people do civil disobedience, they're in and out in the same day. However, some of the people that have been arrested along the southern building of the pipeline in Texas, they've been kept with larger bills, like $5,000 bills. And so the affinity group would also raise funds for those larger bills. So they're picking out people that are very well-known activists and charging them with um, greater, um, holding them for longer periods of time and making their bills a little bit h higher. Mm -hmm. But what is that in comparison to being able to have drink clean water? That's right. And have enough water. And I, I'm getting older. I have to have my hot shower in the morning. <laughs> we need that water to live. <laughs> yeah, it's important to everybody. So they can go to your website, Gathering Tribes. Facebook. On Facebook. Yeah, all of on this Facebook information and all is this information is there and mm -hmm. advice on yeah. and different activities that are coming up in the future. Okay. You post them on uh, Facebook as well. Mm -hmm. And also Native Voice TV, we post a lot of the same information when there's going to be a, a gathering, a flash mob, whatever. Right. Uh, we'll post that so you can go support it if you're local or if you want to travel over there and support people. It's really important because it's important to all of us. So I look forward to having you back again. We need to talk. I'd like to see some of the... Uh, the things you have at your store. I'd like to see some of your work, Michael, if you could talk about uh, you know, your artwork and yeah, your we'll jewelry making. We'll, come back we'll have back. you back to talk about that. I know we don't have much time on this show, but we'll have you back to uh, catch up on what you're, what you're doing. And it seems like there's never a dull moment. Never. No. So, but very important work, and I thank you for all well, we your thank hard you work too in the for community. the information you get to the community. Thank you, Rose. Yeah. You're welcome. Thank you for watching the show. Like us on Facebook, and we'll see you next week. Good night.